Welcome back to McKinley. This is the second video in our control panel series. You'd think getting a palette of eight colors that all our operators could see easily then distinguish between sections of a control panel be easy. Think again. Oh. In the last video, we talked about the general principles of the design. Um, in this video, we're going to talk specifically about how we built and designed and coloured Sheffield. I don't need to go through the design aspects because those principles we covered, but we went through the same process. And if you remember, I talked about this large piece of the fascia that we used as a test for the laser cutting. Well, once we got that cracked, we then decided we would colourise this and we got a three or four of these printed. And Ivana's going to take you through the process of what she did to do it. But then there was a different issue, which was about colour choices. You wouldn't believe how all of us see colours quite differently. Um, putting aside whether you're red, you've got red-green blindness or not, we had a set of colours. So we went and became experts in acrylic colours and avoided the student edition because they've got low density of pigment. And we chose a set from a company called Liquitex and we shared it on Zoom and we printed out and actually uh, coloured in and Ivana will show you how that works and how you actually do it and sent them around by Secret Santa in lockdown delivering late at night when hopefully no one would see you leaving it on people's doorsteps and people would say well I can't see that red but I can see this red and to me they were the same red but it was a different manufacturer or a different uh, uh, whether it had cadmium or not in it it was an interesting journey getting that right but we found a set of eight and that was a journey that Ivana undertook with the guys and we then got on with the designing and the physical building of Sheffield. Uh, hi Ivana is here again and I would like to talk to you about the final selection of the colors for control panel and its journey today. So first I would like to show you this panel. This panel is a prototype of Sheffield control panel we are working on as the first one. Uh, we were trying um, different colors, positions of the lines and thickness of the lines. Uh, first, we started with a choice of 15 colors. Uh, by positioning them close to each other, we were looking for the most convenient visibility of track lines and easy navigation. In general, the control panel is the representing a schematic map of the tracks, stations and services. Choosing the color palette wisely by positioning muted colors next to vibrant ones is the key. And because McKinley Railway team takes its color selection for control panel seriously, the members with color deficiency get involved. So as a result, we ended up with the final selection of eight colors. The rest were hard to distinguish. And I would like to show you an example. So between these two lines, some members, they couldn't really see the difference. So we replaced the dark green color with the lime green. Here are three examples of the color application. This is a spraying bar air airbrush. This is application by sponge. And this is application by brush. So we found out that the best way how to apply the color into the lines is by brush. And later on, uh, we try to buy more liquid color, which is from the company called Liquitex. And we using applicator bottles. So we just simply fill up the bottle with a paint and we apply very thin lines straight into the pre-cut design with a laser uh, by leaving, of course, the, all these dots for light, for LED lights to show through. As you can see from the positioning of the lines, this is how we were trying to position them when we were trying to find the best combination of the colors. And as well, what we find out is that some layouts were cut out very thinly with a laser. So this was all trial and now for the final boards, we have it much thicker. And here we have the finished Sheffield panel. As you can see, it's quite similar to the panels at Manchester and London and Birmingham. But we've used the facilities that were within the DTM 30 cards to add a few extra pieces. 
So we've added a short circuit protection, which if I short circuit out the track, you'll see it comes on and you can hear the PM42 clicking away. We've also added roots, which are for all these coloured boots. So the ones for the E yard, East yard, whoops. They all come through to the head shunt. And then we've got similar on the green coming through onto the West head shunt. We've got the engine shed ones, which all come through to the yard here. And the white ones for this yard coming through onto the head shunt and the blue ones coming through onto that head shunt. This head shunt's got two switches colour coded to indicate whether they're going down the green ladder or the red ladder. But other than that, it's quite similar to what we've had it on the old layout. If we darken the lights, you can see the LEDs shining through. To help our operators, we've also added crossovers as little mini routes. So on here, we can just push down a and it will change to, to a single centre LED to indicate the crossover, the crossing route. And I'll pull up again to get the two outside line lights to come on to indicate the straight across route. Unlike Manchester, which has four of the older cars that only have 16 inputs, this panel now has three cars, each capable of taking 30 inputs. What that actually meant was that we had nearly 90 objects that needed manipulation or display. So that, with the use of routes, dictated which, car, which object went to which card. So because most of the routes that affect the yard here and here are route changing these points down the middle here, that meant they, they all had to go on the same card, which just happened to be lucky that they just happened to be fall quite nicely as the middle card and leave sufficient spare space on two cards on the other side, each side. Okay, let's open it up and see it's inside. Here we see the three cards on the base. Each of the card has capability of taking up to 30 switches for inputs and 30 LEDs for outputs, all connected via ribbon cable. It's a bit of a mission to do. Uh, I went through about three iterations First of all, trying to do it logically on which type of object to which pin. But in the end, what it came down to was reorganizing them so to avoid the number of, to reduce the number of cables cross each other as, to, as much as possible. As you can see, it's still a bit of a rat's nest and debugging can be a bit of a nightmare. The next version we're going to use will be using colored rainbow ribbon cable, which hopefully should be easier to debug. You can still see on the, on the panel coloured dots which we use to indicate which cable was running to which object. But, you know, and it took Pete nearly three weeks, or well, nearly a week to do each board, so it's nearly three weeks wiring effort. But the fact we've only got a 12 volt power supply coming in and a low connect cable going out, compared to a conventional control, cap pack, conventional control panel which might have hundreds of wires coming out of it. Yeah, I think that the effort is worth it. Planning this is a critical part of the, of the process. So what I used was an Excel spreadsheet into which I laid out the routes, the number of routes we needed and the points that they were affected in a crosswise table. And then just started dragging and dropping the columns and the rows so that everything that was concentrated and needed the most resources was all sat in one corner. From that I was able to work out which boards had to have which points and then I could start laying out the boards in an iterative process on a, on a separate spreadsheet to indicate what was going to run to something else. I then used that, which was organising for my own mind, to be able to drive the next process, the next sheet, which was to give detailed instructions to Pete on which wire I had to go to which object. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing uh, the journey we've gone through with getting this panel here. I'm delighted with it. And the few people that have snuck in here to have a look at it, 
think it's an amazing um, product and they can't wait to get their hands on it. We need to test this out operationally before we build its sister panel because we need two identical panels for Sheffield because the station is so large. Once we're happy with that, we then get on with doing the other four panels for here and the remaining ones for the rest of the layout. The journey for those will be a lot simpler because we've done all the hard work in terms of the colour choices, double checking that the hardware works, we know what's involved, Ian's got the templates, so it'll be a simpler but it's still quite an involved journey. And I think the takeaways for you guys is put the time and effort into it. These panels are going to last the lifetime of your layout and therefore it's important to get it right and take as broader as consensus as you can to check that it works and it's simple to use. Thanks for watching.